Welcome back to another episode of All Chiefed Up. Today we're going to be talking about camp on Thursday. The guys had a day off on Friday and then they got back at it on Saturday. So we're going to talk about all that and top five plays from each day. Before we get going, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you haven't hit subscribe yet. Also, share with your friends, family, and all other Chiefs fans. Let them know where they can find some good Chiefs content on YouTube. Hit that bell so you get notifications when we come out with new content. Trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before the season starts. We're over 900 now, so we're closing in on it. I think we're going to get there. Okay, let's kick off with Thursday. That was day number eight for the Chiefs. Um, we'll start off with a little bit of injury stuff. Gary Jennings left practice with a concussion. Um, Fountain left practice with a groin injury. Um, we did get Prince Tega Winogo back. He came off the pup list, so he he participated in a little bit of stuff. Um, the practice was a lot easier for him. They just did like a 10-10-10 practice. Um, it's basically just for mental stuff, just to retain things. So when they put the pads back on, they can go. Basically, it's the ones versus the twos, twos versus the threes, ones versus threes. It's everything but ones versus ones, basically. Um, it's pretty much designed for the offense to win or the, the number one team to win, whoever. So – that was about it with that. Um, Carlos Dunlap was first practice, so it's good to see yeah. Carlos Dunlap in. Um, another good thing with the practice, we've seen Miko. He he looked really good on Thursday, so he, he got a lot of deep crosses. Um, he was able to show his speed. Pacheco made a nice catch. Um, Sky Moore had a deep TD. We'll get to all that in the uh, top five plays, but what do you think about Dunlap coming back and getting in the mix, man? I heard he was running with the ones already as of Saturday. Uh, I think it's going to be great for the team to have his uh, veteran experience. I mean, he's been there. He's done that for a long time now. He said he had some hefty goals. He wants to get to that 100 sacks. He's never been to a playoff game, and he hasn't won a Super Bowl. So that's where he's heading with the Chiefs in his mind. So I did like seeing him out there with Frank Clark and George Karloftis. Karloftis is already picking his brain just like he's picking Frank's. And it looks like they were out there together with him working on that. And it's just good to see that and the drive that Karloftis has and the fact that those two veterans are out there, you know, giving him uh, their time and knowledge and everything. It's really cool to see. On Thursday, the defense stood out a lot. I'll read you a few plays of who stood out. Sneed blitzed, uh, jumped up in the air, tipped a pass, and Turk Wharton picked it off, finished the play. That was really nice. Uh, Bolton got a tipped pass. Uh, Brian Cook got a pass breakup in the red zone. And Trent McDuffie got an interception. So the defense is starting to, to look pretty good, starting to come together, and they're competing really well with this offense who – to be honest, is loaded. For sure. I think that they've got a great thing going on with all these defensive backs, man. The corners, they're getting in it hot and heavy, trying to figure out who's going to be where. The only question, Mark, I have for the whole thing is like, where's Lonnie Johnson at? Why is he not getting as much snaps? Like, why is he not getting evaluated as much? He's not making any noise at all. Um, is it that they don't think he's going to be in that one-two talk? Or is it just that they haven't seen, um, you know, what they need to see from the rookie. So they're getting the majority of the snaps. I'm not real sure, but uh, I even asked Pete Sweeney on Twitter. He had posted on there and asked uh, or said something about the cornerbacks. And I, I replied to it and like, Hey man, um, what's up with Lonnie Johnson? Didn't get a response, but everybody seemed to be just as interested as I was about that. So uh, still not sure about it. Maybe we'll find out soon. Yeah, I feel like maybe he didn't respond. Maybe they don't know. Maybe it's just like you said. Maybe the coaches know what they're getting with Lonnie Johnson. He's a veteran, and maybe they're just letting the rookies take the majority of the snaps because that's a big battle right there. They're not going to be able to take all of them, so they got to find the right one. Okay, well, let's just jump right into the top five plays for day eight, Thursday's practice. Uh, we're going to keep it simple at number five. I'm just going to put number five as Carlos Dunlap arrives to practice. That's just a cool thing to see. It's the first play. The first right. play. <laughs> Sporting the number eight, looking good. I mean, it's good to see. We said that the defensive line had to be addressed. Veach did it. I, I think that's worthy of a top five play right there. Okay, number four, we got Sky Moore lining up at running back, and he looks to take one up the left side and bust it off. If this was a real play, he, he chunks a big one right there. Number three, we got Noah Gray with a nice catch over the middle. Uh, Mahomes finds him on a little cross route. He makes a nice catch. Looks good. Noah Gray has been very impressive. Um, I've seen some guy in the comments. Steve, you can pop it right on up because we like to show some comments. He said we lost him at Noah Gray. So he doesn't like our channel based on the fact that we just tell the truth that Noah Gray's had a very good-looking camp. 
I don't get it. I would think as a chief fan, you'd like to see Noah Gray succeed. <laughs> it's, I don't a per- know. it's a personal beef with Noah Gray. I don't know. <laughs> maybe they went to school together and he picked on him. I don't know. Maybe, maybe <laughs> Noah Gray, maybe he borrowed five bucks from him. Gray hasn't paid him back. I don't know. Number two, Sky Moore with a deep touchdown catch. Um, just perfectly thrown by Mahomes, catches him in stride, looks amazing. Uh, Sky Moore's looking so good. That's another, you know, young guy, not just even a rookie to look good. He just looks good compared to everyone. Sky Moore is going to be a beast in this league. Like I, you can just tell. And then number one, we got Isaiah Pacheco with a beautiful deep catch contested, just rips it down. Uh, Pacheco is going to be a matchup nightmare, be it with linebackers or nickel corners or whoever it may be. Uh, Pacheco, I look for Pacheco to have a very nice preseason, and uh, we could start hearing like more Chief fans kind of on the Pacheco bandwagon, maybe trying to push Clyde for that number one spot. Right, and this is something else that's not good for Ronald Jones because he's not the best receiving back. So if you have Pacheco out there showing out as a receiver as well as on the ground, it's just another thing that's going to put him a little more above Rojo on that depth chart. So uh, still, that's kind of like the cornerback situation with Lonnie Johnson with that veteran. Now we have the running back veteran, Rojo, who's not getting the looks. And it and it could be the same thing. It could be they just need to see what these rookies have to offer. They already know what Rojo does. Uh, maybe it's the same kind of deal as Lonnie Johnson. Okay, let's just jump into yesterday's practice, day number nine, Saturday. Uh, we'll start right off again with the injuries. Uh, Taylor Stallworth had to leave uh, knee contusion. Um, pr- uh, Fortson didn't practice again. Jennings didn't practice again with a concussion. Uh, Fountain, coming off the groin injury, did return to practice, but he did have to leave early with a finger injury. They said they're going to have to do some x-rays to determine the severity of the injury, so we don't really know anything on that just yet. But let's hope for Fountain's sake that that's not a big injury because he's actually looked pretty decent. Tobes talked about him, and he's got a – He's a dark horse to make that last wide receiver spot. Yeah, for sure. Anytime Dave Tobe's talking about you at the pressers, that's definitely a good sign. And we all know he's a big fan of Fountain. They worked on two minute drills um, in practice on Saturday. They did uh, five drives, two for the first team, two for the second team, and the third team took a a rep. Um, the Chiefs defense demolished the offense all day long. That's all I can say. Um, in the first drive, very first play, Mike Dana and Chris Jones combined for a sack. Um, the defense held three plays later, turnover on down. So the first team just got shut down. The second team, Joshua Kando, looked amazing. He got a pressure off the edge, and the defense won that series. Uh, the third drive, DeAndre Baker picked Shane Bouchel. Defense wins that series. It took all the way to the fifth series that the, the offense finally won a series. It took them eight plays. Noah Gray looked amazing in that series. He caught four passes. Uh, Sky Moore caught a first down pass that kept the chains moving. Uh, big big catch by Franks, the backup tight end. And then Butker hit a 50-yard field goal to, to give the offense the win there. But it's looking like the defense is really holding their own, which we talked about it. You know, we have been talking about it. And again, it looks like Noah Gray is shining in this offense this year, be it he's in better shape or maybe he's just learning the playbook better and he's developing more of a chemistry with Mahomes. Yeah, and you got to love to see the defense performing the way they are because they are a very young unit. Uh, there's a lot of question marks on who's going to be where. But the, just the fact that the guys are getting out there and, you know, performing at a high level, that's, that's really good to see because this defense has been catching a lot of crap for – uh, not being good, basically, even in all the mainstream media, sports, uh, ESPN, whatever. They want to talk about how the Chiefs could finish dead last in the West because their defense sucks and they lost the Honey Badger and yada, yada, yada. But, um, I mean, I just don't see it, man. I think that we got a good squad. I think they're very young, a lot of promise, a lot of talent, and I'm glad that they're actually out there performing at a high level already because that just bodes well for how the season's going to go. Uh, McDuffie had a big day today, more pass breakups. He looked really good. Um, they did the nine on seven work to work on some running game. Derek Noddy looks really good on the inside. He is quietly having a good camp this year, which is great. He's plugging gaps. He's doing all the dirty work. And then of course, uh, Carlos Dunlap got some increased playing time today. Um, he done some nine on seven. He done a little one-on-one drills and yeah, that about wraps it up for a recap of Saturday's practice. 
yeah, man, it's looking like the defense is really holding their own, which is amazing. It looks like uh, you've got players like Naughty and Kane Doe actually are showing us a little something, which is a good sign. And then with the addition of Dunlap coming in, you know, just being a mentor with Frank Clark. Frank Clark looks like a changed guy out there. We've said it time and time again, and and them leading the way with uh, Carl Loftus. I mean, I'm I'm starting to think this defensive line might not be such a, a weak point as we kind of thought it may be. No, I think uh, Adam Dunlap was definitely much, much needed, and I think it might help more than we even think because it does give you that veteran presence that Melvin Ingram brought last year, and that's what we really wanted when we wanted Melvin Ingram back was to still have that guy in the locker room that could lead the way for these younger guys. Uh, granted, you know, we've talked about that defensive tackle spot maybe being a little weak, but Turk Wharton has really showed up in camp. And then, like you said, Derek Nottie's quietly been just solid. So, I mean, maybe there's not as much to worry about, like you said. So I'm just excited to see this defense out on the field and see how they react this year. Uh, let's get into the top five plays of Saturday's practice. At number five, we got him a Holmes pass to Juju Smith-Schuster. What else is new? Um, he hits him on a nice little route here. Juju looks really good this camp. He looks so lean. Like, I feel like their chemistry can only get better. Don't you agree? Yeah, I mean, they're just getting started, man. And I think that, you know, Mahomes having them down in Texas and working on some stuff way before uh, minicamp OTAs and all that stuff, I think it's paid off tremendously because they already have some pretty good chemistry. And there's a long way to go, man. By the end of the season, it could be a pretty nasty duo. Yeah, number four, I'm going to put both Trent McDuffie pass breakups. He had a nice one over the middle, uh, knocked the ball away from Miko Hardman, looked really good. And then he uh, stops Juju on a little out route, it looks like, on the corner. And beautiful plays by McDuffie. It's good to see McDuffie coming on a little bit. Everybody was giving him a little crap right off the bat because, you know, everybody was on the Josh Williams hype train. But it looks like McDuffie's holding his own. At number three, we have an end around for Sky Moore who breaks it off up the side. And it looks like if this was a real game situation, that's a big chunk right there. I don't know if it'd go for 20 or 30. I can't really tell by the uh, angle on the field, but. He breaks it off pretty well. At number two, another Mahomes to Juju. Dude, Juju and Mahomes, these two together, oh, my God. I just cannot wait to see this. In, uh, You're going to hear that a lot this season. Right. In a game time a situation, I just cannot wait to see it. And then let's get to number one. Number one, Miko Hardman. Again, he takes the number one spot with an amazing acrobatic one-hand catch over the defender. And, oh, my God, Miko is finally coming on. Is this the play where he mossed the guy? Yes. Okay. Miko yeah. Miko mosses someone. And I mean, Miko is quietly having a good camp again. He started off a little rough, but but he's coming on and, and we wanted to see that from Miko. So that about wraps it up on Saturday, man. Hey, I have an honorable mention for a play for the top five plays that you did not put on the top five. Oh, go ahead. What is it? There was a Josh Gordon sighting. Uh Mahomes totally hit him on a deep route. For a touchdown, he really? absolutely smoked McDuffie, bro. Like he was probably five yards open. Yeah. Okay. For one, I, I didn't that... expect Josh Gordon to do anything. And number two, yeah, I just totally missed that one. So hey, you go ahead I'm and add put that it on up. here. I'm going to put it on here. Hey, we'll... let's go ahead and give Josh Gordon one B. Okay. After just, the Miko Moss. Just because he finally showed up, man. Yeah. Well, good, I mean, good to see. It's good to see. Yeah. We've been rough on Josh Gordon a little bit. Like he's kind of fell behind a little, but I think, okay, I'll give him some credit where credit's <laughs> due. All right, Chiefs Kingdom. Thanks for joining us on the quick little rundown of Thursday and Saturday's practice at camp. Make sure to get down in the comments. Let us know what you think about all these position battles. Who do you think is going to make the team? What do you think is happening with Lonnie Johnson and Rojo? Put that down there in the comments. Also, if you have not subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell so you get notifications when we come out with new content. And make sure to spread the word and tell everybody where they can find some good Chiefs content on YouTube. Right. We're only about 75 subscribers away from 1,000, so we can't wait to get it there. You guys throw those subs around. You know Josh Williams is always watching. And by the way, Steve, I like that T-shirt. Where'd you get that bad boy? Oh, how about those Chiefs? Got a rep, red beard. If you guys haven't been over to How About Those Chiefs uh, YouTube channel, make sure you get over there, subscribe. Uh, Cole does a great job. But, yeah, he released some merch. Um, I'm not sure about the website. Go on his uh, YouTube channel and hit the descriptions. I'm sure it's on there, and you can get you one of these bad boys. It looks it looks fresh. I'm going to have to cop one of those. Okay, guys, that about wraps it up for the day. Thanks for sticking with us. We'll be back tomorrow.
was a sight for my soul. Yeah, cause I said, yeah, cause I said, ah, ah, ah. 